Welcome to our review on chemicals from salt. When we're talking about salt, quite often what we're actually referring to is sodium chloride. So every day in our lives when we're talking about salt that we're putting on our chips, salt on the roads, all of these sides of things, it's sodium chloride, which has the formula NaCl. So we're going to use it in our food as a flavoring and also as a preservative. It's also a very useful raw material to us. In terms of where we actually get our salt from then, we can obtain it from seawater by evaporating off the water. That just leaves us with our salt deposit. We can also get it from salt deposits underground. Now the reason that we've got these big salt deposits underground is because many years ago there were actually seas there. But over time they've evaporated and become covered by rock, just leaving these giant deposits of salt, solid salt under the surface. And we can obviously use machines to cut through the salt and make these large caverns as we extract it. So one way we can actually get this salt out from underground is through a process called solution mining. So what we actually have here is on the surface we've actually got a pump that's going to pump water down from the surface into our underground deposit. As the salt actually comes into contact with the water it's going to dissolve it and that means we're going to end up with this solution called brine which is a very concentrated salt solution. Once we've got our brine dissolved we pump it back to the surface and then we can store it until it's ready for use. One of the good things about solution mining is that it's a continuous process that requires very little labour. So as a result of that, it keeps the costs right down. There are some downsides to it, however. One of the biggest problems of this solution mining is that it could lead to subsidence. So if you imagine that underground we've got these deposits of salt and on top we've got our rock, if we then dissolve the salt, what we're literally doing is removing the bit that's holding the upper layers. So what we're actually going to end up doing there is removing the salt underneath means that we've got nothing supporting the upper layers of the ground and so eventually it will sink and that's what subsidence is. Now once we've got our brine solution then we don't necessarily want to use it as just brine. What we want is to get those chemicals that make up our brine out of it. So we're going to use electrolysis again. We looked at electrolysis when we looked at getting pure copper and it's the same process here to actually split our brine solution into the useful substances. And when we carry out electrolysis on brine, what we generate is hydrogen, chlorine and sodium hydroxide solution. So we're going to use that hydrogen to manufacture things like margarine because what it actually does is it converts those liquid vegetable oils into solid vegetable fats. When we blend that, then what we actually end up with is margarine that we can spread from the fridge without it just running everywhere. Because let's face it, no one wants to try to use a fat that you kind of pour onto the bread and then just kind of slop around on it. It's not very appealing. In terms of what we use our chlorine for, then chlorine is used to sterilise water. And it does this by killing bacteria. And it will kill bacteria in swimming pools and in tap water. But it's not just sterilising water that we can use chlorine for, we can also use it to make other chemicals. So we use chlorine to make bleach and also to make PVC, which is a type of plastic which is used in a whole variety of things from obviously pipes to interesting clothing, let's say. We can also get our sodium hydroxide solution from our electrolysis of brine. And sodium hydroxide can be reacted with vegetable oils in order to make soap. We could also react it with chlorine to make bleach and our equation for that is sodium hydroxide plus chlorine makes sodium chloride plus water plus sodium chlorate and it's that sodium chlorate that we find in our bleaches.